Welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, very pleased to see our next guest again, and uh, he's got a beautiful new cookbook out. He certainly does. You will know Roger Mooking from Everyday Exotic and also Heat Seekers. How are you, my friend? I'm doing really good. Nice Congratulations to see you. on the cookbook. Yeah, the Thank you. cookbook is gorgeous. We were teasing you a little bit about Heat Seekers uh, at the beginning. And <laughs> some of the things that they make you do on that show, it's unbelievable. You know, it's a lot of fun, though, because it's uh, the heat is a gateway to different cultures. Yeah. So some of the food is like really spectacular, delicious, and all that stuff. And some of it just destroys you. Now, <laughs> when you guys were trying to outdo each other, I have to ask, have either of you ended up in the hospital? Nope, never been to the hospital yet. <laughs> Although, with better judgment, maybe a couple times I should have been. <laughs> <laughs> should have maybe. Just checked it, just to make sure just everything's all right. Sure uh, Everyday Exotic, a perfect extension of the show as well. And yeah. I just, I love this whole concept, right? Like, your exotic is my familiar, or, you know, vice versa, all those things. But, you know, really getting people outside their comfort zone, whether they're knowledgeable about the ingredients or not. Well, you've hit it on the head, you know, the word exotic is completely a term of relativity, right? So when I go to Asia and I talk about a five spice lamb burger, they're excited that they, the burger is like this exotic thing with yeah. five spice that they use all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's completely in reverse in North America. Canadian yeah. bacon is exotic to other yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> Syrup, exotic to Now we've people. brought some ingredients here today that you're gonna teach us a little bit about. The plantain, I have enjoyed it in restaurants. I have never tackled cooking it. How does one uh, approach the plantain? Okay, so there's a couple of different ways you could deal with this. These are unripe plantain, they're green. So these ones you would use more like potato. Right, so in the West Indies, we'll boil these, we'll pe obviously peel them, mm -hmm. right? And when they're green like this, they're a little bit hard, so you need to score them and soak them in warm water, and then they'll peel away after a few minutes quite easily. Ah, nice. And then you just boil it in water, cut it down, you can put it in soup, stews, any kind of thing, like how do you use potatoes or right. yeah. sweet potatoes, right? Uh, plantain fries? Yeah, that's cool, yeah, yeah. it's really, really good, yeah. No, I'm Chips. Hungry. I'm thinking outside the box. <laughs> There you go, buddy. Yeah, buddy, we've got the edamame. Edamame, everybody knows this, like, from sushi restaurants, Japanese yes. restaurants. Yeah. But what's really cool is, you know, edamame is soybean. So this is where you get soy milk from. This is where you get uh, tofu from, all those things. So in the book, there's a recipe where we make, you know, uh, fish and chips. Mm -hmm. So instead of mushy peas, we make mushy edamame. Yeah. We marinate it in soy as well as soy milk, the fish. Yeah. And we make a batter with that whole thing. And then, like, it's so simple and it's versatile, right? There's an ingredient that we don't have here today that I am constantly stumped by, and it's it's okra. Oh, My yeah. dad grew okay, up in the south, and he said, <laughs> here, 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 here we go. You have a recipe in here for okra, and how do you like to prepare it? There's a couple ways to deal with the okra, right? So one, uh, we have it inside of a chili, just to give it that extra, because you know there's a silkiness about okra. <laughs> it's not <laughs> it's not I like the silky. Term. You like that, right? That was good, right? Silky like a slug. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things you either really like it or you really don't. Yeah. Right. Personally, I really love it and I want to just introduce it. We have another I'll try example your of recipe. The, you really like it or you really don't. A lot of people with cilantro, uh, there's lovers, there's haters. But so check it out. There's a genetic, they've done some tests with this physiologically. People, um, like how some people will have asparagus mm -hmm. yeah. and they pee and it smells like asparagus. Yeah. And other people, it's an enzyme, right? It doesn't in happen. Yeah, that's like genetic, right? Yeah. So there's a genetic thing with cilantro that some people taste soap and some people taste fresh deliciousness. I am the, Are you soap, the soap person. Really? You know how the genetic. one thing well, I so don't I like no is cilantro. Idea because I always thought people were insane if they didn't like cilantro. I'm like, what's not so, to like about cilantro? I didn't so, know that. That's genetic. It's a genetic thing. They've tested it, it's proven. Because people who love cilantro do not understand why I don't no. like the flavor. Yeah. So you're a little bit alien to me, but it's okay. But that's what about okay. Asparagus? You're a friendly no, no, alien. No, no. She's exo <laughs> exotic. She's I'm exotic. exotic. She was. And what have we got here? These are Szechuan peppercorns. Okay, so what's really cool about this? Check it out. Take one. Okay. Take one, boss. Okay. Bite into it. Uh oh. And you get a very floral thing going mm. on. But ancient China, they used to take like half handfuls of this, the dentists, and they pop it in your mouth because it has a numbing effect. I want more. Yeah? It, it has a slight good. numbing effect. Keep so numbing. <laughs> one of the classic dishes they use with that mm, is a I dish can called. I feel it now. Yeah, yeah. mapo tofu. And you always finish mapo tofu by grinding that up and crumbling it on top. So some people like it really sort of numbing and mm -hmm. other people less so, so you could play with it. But the flavor is very floral, open, bright, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it has a very beautiful. unique, very but still distinct. peppery, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's nice that this kind of stuff's accessible because I remember growing up as a kid, like 
uh, it was really hard to get access to, to anything outside of, you know, the mainstay, white bread, North America kind of food. And it's fun to walk into a grocery mm -hmm. store now and, and learn about what to do with all this stuff. And in a great city like Vancouver, where you have a large East Indian yeah. population, Asian, Asian population, population, you know, they come here and they're demanding those ingredients. So the, the community you at large get is, is more accessible. Yeah, man, it's nice. What do we got over here? Okay, so this is tamarind, okay? Um, they come in a little pod. They grow on trees in tropical climate. You're really liking that, huh? Yeah. No, I was going cilantro. Oh, he's going cilantro. I was saving the cilantro, but it's really actually nice. It's <laughs> Szechuan peppercorn as well. Here, have some edamame. We'll make a salad. <laughs> so this is tamarind. Outside of the pod, it, inside of it, sorry, there's this paste. And you feel it. It's kind of like, I don't know. Molasses. Like times dates. Times 10, yeah. It's like dates, right? Yeah. But it's quite sour. has a bitterness to it. But the beauty of it is a very round, full flavor, okay? So if you want to add some of this to a soup, a stew, broths, oh. it kind of dissolves away, and all of a sudden your food that was mediocre yeah. is now fantastic. Are you inspired at first taste uh, when you get this stuff, or do you have to sort of sit with an ingredient for a while and, and try out different things and really experiment, or, or can you make that connection pretty quickly now? To now, I mean, I've been cooking 20 years now, so yeah. I can make the connection of what and how to make things work together really naturally. But a lot of this stuff I just grew up with. You right. know, like tamarind, this used to grow in our backyard in the Caribbean. Really? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like, so it's like home food. It's home food. What do we got here? This is tamarind as a, as a sort of a, a, a sauce. Mm -hmm. So this uh, comes in a little jar. It's just been boiled with water and then strained, so you don't have any of the seeds in the pulp. This in, in the powder form, right. okay? So you can add it to spice rubs or finish soups Most and stuff like that. Most people are familiar with the yeah, powder, and in the Caribbean we make these things. These are tamarind balls. Yeah. So you add a little bit of chili peppers okay. and some sugar, and you roll it. Heat seeking. Mm. You roll it, and it's a great snack. It's really good for digestion. Really? Yeah, it's really, really. Don't it eat too many like of these. It tastes like a treat, though. Oh, don't, <laughs> don't eat too many. Don't eat too many, okay? <laughs> Uh-oh. Hold on. And scene. If you want to pick up. Oh, uh, those are really good, though. a little bit of kick in there. Uh, oh, yeah. Everyday Exotic, the cookbook, is fantastic. Would make a great gift, of course. And you can get your copy signed this Saturday at the Gourmet Warehouse on East Hastings. Make sure that you check it out. And you can always see Roger on the Food Network. You can check your local listings for both Everyday Exotic and also Heat Seekers. Yum. Uh, yeah, you want more, but I'm telling you. Just a couple. Just a couple? Just a couple, couple is good. Okay. Hey, thank you for warning me. Otherwise, I would have been <laughs> <laughs> Why did you warn him? It wasn't funny. Why did you take a so break?